Uh, namaste, good afternoon, everyone. The theme of landscapes of new normal sounded very exciting to us because this is a global phenomena. Everyone is going through it. So the world month should be with some phenomena that is uh, being faced by the entire world. So we, we started with this theme of landscapes of new normal in which we have had our first session panel discussion, uh, session one with very uh, wonderful experts, uh, Padma Shri Bhalu Monde, Urmila Rajadhyak, she is the landscape architect, and uh, Professor Nitin Rajay. Then we had talk sessions with Mrs. Nirmala Butch, Professor Chaya, who is a, a very renowned professor of architecture. Farhad Contractor, who is uh, passionately involved in water conservation. And just before this session, we had a talk by Virat Chatterjee, who is a practicing landscape architect. So with this background, we embark on this panel, panel discussion session two, again with a very exciting and very and prominent and eminent speakers. That is Mr. Abhilash Khandekar, who is... Hi, uh, hi. Hello, Mr. Abhilash Khandekar, then Mr. Arun Sahai, and Barbara Bonifai. Barbara Bonifai is an environmental psychologist. Abhilash Khandekar is a senior um, journalist, and Arun Sahai is a person, uh, an IIT Kharagpur, uh, engineer and he has worked on various important fronts. I will just read down the bio details of all the experts for the benefit of our um, audience. So starting with Abhilash Khandekar, he is a journalist of about 40 years standing in print and TV. Essentially, he has been a political correspondent but has been wearing a number of hats. Yes, he is a very, very busy person. He writes on urban issues, the environment and wildlife. And I've seen some of his TV shows also on environment, which are extremely interesting and thought provoking. He is the president of uh, MP Cricket Association and um, of Indor, and besides that, a member of Madhya Pradesh Wildlife Board, IFM Board of Governors, Indian Institute of Forest Management. He is member of the Board of Governors. He is member of the Central Zoo Authority, Delhi, and he is member of the MP Wetland Authority, Bhopal. He is founder of the Nature Volunteers, TNV, in 1992, and uh, with his attempts, he could save a 120-year-old wetland called Silpur Lake at Indore. He has authored and edited books on birds and other topics. He has traveled widely across the world. He has been the editor of Daring Pascal and has worked with DNA Mumbai, Hindustan Times. He was the launching editor of a series of editions of Divya Bhar Marathi in Maharashtra, cities like Aurangabad, Nasik, Solapur, Jalgaon, etc. He divides his time between Indore and Bhopal, and with the many hats he is wearing, he is doing a lot of good work to save the environment and to build a, 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 a nice uh, environment for the especially for Madhya Pradesh and now also in Maharashtra. Barbara Bonifai is an academician. She has joined? No. Barbara Bonifai is an academician at the Parisian Laboratory of Social Psychology at the University of Paris, Nanterre. She is interested in the consequences linked to the way we consume natural resources, such as water and energy and reflects on the behaviors to adopt in order to best preserve our environment. Barbara has also, we have worked together on some projects and she 
uh, where I was looking at architectural quality and she was looking at the environmental psychological aspect of that. Arun Sahai, again, is a multifaceted person. He's a mechanical engineer from IIT Kharagpur with business administration from IIM Ahmedabad. He has over 30 years experience in India in diversification and modernization projects, corporate planning, technology transfer, product and branch management. He is member of the strategic and competitive intelligence professionals, Virginia, USA, uh, which is a global community of competitive intelligence, which is known as CI professionals. He is presently working on business process, re-engineering strategy, performance management system, and other human resource assignments. He has also been a very, very active ex-chairman uh, of the youth organization of Speak Society for Promotion of Indian Classical Music and Culture amongst youth. So he has contributed a lot in saving the intangible heritage of India. So that was the brief biodata, very brief biodata of such um, esteemed speakers. The panel discussion uh, part two will uh, move around two basic questions. So I will um, float the first question, which is like with your intense experience and expertise, what do you think are the new normal? Are the new normal conditions going to stay for the future? Or even if they are temporary, what has the new normal communicated for our developments of the future? How do you perceive the landscapes of new normal? So that is my first question. Should I address it to you, uh, Abhilashi, or Arunji? Let Arunji speak. Yes. Yeah. Arunji, are you there? Yep, yep. Yeah, very good. So, uh, could you get the first question? Yeah, so yeah. can you repeat it uh, once more? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, like with your intense experience and expertise, what do you think? Are the new normal conditions going to stay for the future? Or even if, let us say, they disappear, they are temporary, but they certainly give us some messages. So what has the new normal communicated for our developments of the future? How do you perceive the landscapes of the new normal? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Isula, MP chapter, for inviting me. <clears throat> you know, if you look at evolution, I mean, the change is always taking place. If you remember, man originally was a hunter-gatherer, and he would be going hunting and... Uh, 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 for his, his next meal virtually. It's later that they started growing crops and consuming, you know, uh, cultivating land. Uh, and in the process, they no longer had to fend for food for survival. And so they had time for other activities. Uh, of course, in the process of growing crops, they also started destroying forests to create the farms. And slowly, the greed and profit motive kept in. And now you can see that all life forms are threatened by us humans. And if there are no humans, all life forms will flourish. It's amazing to see. I mean, if you see, if you go to Lanthampur and some tiger reserves, Abhilaj is an expert in this. I mean, yeah. a man like me, you know, when a tiger is around, the deer avoid that territory. When the deer avoids the territory, the plants get a chance to grow. And this yeah. in turn helps rivers and streams to grow. So how, that's how nature works. The mere presence of a tiger allows plants and streams to flourish. Yes. Of course, it, uh, I would talk of uh, from a corporate angle. Mm. <laughs> uh, you can see during lockdowns how nature has reclaimed the space that we had occupied. I mean, you, it's a motherhood statement to see. You can see birds are chirping much more and 
Yeah. There have been, there have been pictures of uh, wildlife coming into cities which are deserted. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so this is very much a reality. Uh, <clears throat> now, coming to working, the working environment. I mean, what certainly the uh, the lockdown and this new normal is is working from home. That has come to stay. Uh, you know, we we've, we've been talking of working from home. I'm talking now with what a little knowledge I have of human resources. Uh, it was a means to attract uh, people and retain people. You know, you allowed them to work one day from home so that they could attend to their domestic uh, requirements. Uh, and yet, with the companies, uh, it was possible, of course, because of the communications and uh, internet facilities and laptops and such things that was there. Now, with lockdown, people are working from home for months at a time. In fact, in fact it has been reported that Infosys has realized that there was a significant improvement in productivity and margins by working from home. <laughs> they soon realized that this, there was scope for smaller offices and so save rents. Mm. Of course, it, it applies to their kind of business, but it is not possible for manufacturing and shop floor jobs. You can't, those have to function. But there are certain functions that you can work from home. Now, one of the advantages of working from home is the commuting, is it? I mean, people could spend hours commuting from home to offices. Public transport is now, uh, well, uh, e even the, the transport which generates so much pollution uh, is reduced. In fact, in, in Delhi, uh, they even tried odd even numbers. And uh, whilst uh, pollution may not have come down or, or it is not clear that the, the transport was causing the pollution because we also have this problem in Delhi of crop burning in Punjab and uh, the other farms nearby. But... Uh, uh, certainly the roads were emptier and you know the amount of fuel that is wasted at uh, red lights and such crossings with, with traffic that was certainly same so there is some benefit but uh, uh, when you, your commuting time comes down it gives you more time for productive and personal work that begins to happen now so or, or, that is the plus side like I said companies realize that things were possible they were, in fact, saving costs and many other benefits. But there are other problems. I mean, not everybody has a large enough house. You've, you've heard of stories of how people are working from home and there's so much disturbance at the home. Uh, it does cause problems. Not everybody can afford something that is bigger. In fact, uh, the office was also looked upon as a second home. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this isolation also is causing problems. In fact, uh, I'm sure the other experts would comment on the mental problems and stress due to uncertainty and ambiguity. And we talk of loyalty in organizations. You know, when you're meeting your colleagues, your team, you're working as a team, uh, that spirit, all that tends to suffer. Uh, what about diversity? Women end up working two shifts. They have to do their office work and also their domestic work. So they're overworked. And some of them may in fact drop drop out of the, the corporate world because there's so much uh, stress on them in, in this work from home situation when everybody else could also be working. Children are also in, attending to schools and things like that. So diversity could take a, a, a beating. Because we want diversity to come in to our workplace. Uh, what about the shift between micro roles? You're doing your office job and then you might be doing a domain, your role as a father, your role as a, as a son or your role as a, a, a husband, all being interchanged whilst you work at home because these pressures are there. You may be asked to do help with this or whatever it is. So your roles keep changing. Once you go to the office, at least that role is off. But now it's not possible. Now, to work from home also, of course, you have to have your files available to you. I mean, uh, more so more so for, uh, I would say, a legal firm. 
you know, where they have case files as such things, or even subject files. If there's anything. Now, of course, digitization will make it possible to have these files accessible. But then there is another issue of cyber security. So all this is seeing a change. And now we have people are talking now a gig economy, you know, where short term or freelance work instead of permanent jobs could come up, could emerge. Uh, now, again, when you're working from home, routine work can be automated, but what about creative work? I mean, you architects would know. Uh, is it amenable uh, when you're working in on creative work? Now, HR, of course, will try and find solutions to these problems. Uh, one of the thoughts that are coming about is maybe you'll have smaller offices. Maybe you will not have an exclusive room for yourself. You'll be sharing a room or sharing a desk. It will not be personal for you because uh, you are not coming to office every day. Maybe you will uh, inform the office or the administration in advance when you would like to come to office to work. So um, clearly smaller offices and some such hybrid landscape is emerging as I can see. Um, that's likely to happen. You'll have slightly smaller offices. There will be more working from home. Uh, and at your option, you come to work to the office and you may not have an exclusive room. Such changes I do envisage. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aruchi. That was an interesting insight about you being uh, having a vast experience working in corporate sector yeah. and uh, of course alternate companies have realized that the alternatives could be there of um, uh, working from home and all that i'm very very happy to see barbara <laughs> barbara welcome i put welcome. it down welcome thank you okay good good so we have started the other two experts are mr abhilash kandekar he's a very senior senior journalist and mr arun sahai who is uh, an engineer uh, iit graduate and also he has worked in the corporate sector and in industries so um uh, i i will i have already done the biodata i've read yours also so as I said, we I have to, this panel discussion will revolve around two major questions. Then it there can be offshoots and all. So I will now uh, pose the question to you. So the question is, uh, you have an intense experience in environmental psychology. So yes. what do you think? Are the new normal conditions going to stay for the future? or even if they are temporary, what has the new normal communicated for our development of the future? How do you perceive the landscapes of the new normal? Is it fine? Yes. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so, so we would love to hear your viewpoint. Okay. Um, Hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Savita, for your invitation. Thank you so much. I'm very happy. And uh, I have, um, uh, you want that I explain a little bit uh, what is environmental psychology? Yes? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. So I have, a, I have a PowerPoint very uh, quickly. Yeah. Be because my English is not uh, uh, exceptional. So, oh, it's fine. Not an issue. No, Not an issue. no, 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 no. Uh, because yeah. it's a, now it's easy, but after this, it's more complicated for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you uh, want to one, share? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, just one uh, second. Okay. Yes. Okay. L'intégralité de votre écran. Okay. You see my screen or? Yeah. yeah. All of you now. can see it. No? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we may not be this. able to read it properly, but uh, yes. she can explain. Yes. Okay. You, so, uh, because you can read and and it's more um, more comfortable yeah. for. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So mm-hmm. environmental psychology is the study of transaction, transactions between individuals and their physical settings. And uh, in these transactions, individuals change their environment and their behavior and experience are also changed by the environment. It's uh, always uh, a transactions between the two. And we, um, uh, it's uh, uh, applied psychology, and we use uh, all um, the knowledge on uh, 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 individual psychology for understand this transaction, uh, transaction, transactions, and we work um, in a, a lot of places like uh, schools, uh, sacred, uh, sacred. Uh, uh, place. Hospitals, uh, office, buildings, museum, uh, place for um, uh, ch- um, young, very young uh, child, or places for uh, very old people. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, this uh, um, uh, problematics of uh, old people in Europe. And uh, okay. each uh, um, uh, uh, this place have uh, some people in this pla- place have always um, a specific needs, and uh, mm-hmm. the space can um, uh, uh, can respond or not to uh, the needs. And also, uh, um, environmental psychology is an interdisciplinary field. Um, don't focus on uh, individuals and the surroundings. And we work with uh, sociologists, with architects, with urbanists, with uh, linguists, uh, a lot of um, uh, a lot of people. And uh, we we have also um, uh, um, in, uh, interrogations about environmental stress, like noise or pollutions. Also, crowding, and uh, we we develop a concept like place attachments, uh, who means the the feelings uh, between people and the uh, place, and uh, we work also on the sense of space, like a staging of space. For example, here is a, a O N U uh, office. Uh, uh, not office um, uh, meeting place, and mm. this is an uh, um, uh, office. Uh, uh, office. This is um, the the office of the uh, uh, president, French president, and this is the office of uh, uh, director in school. And the staging of space is uh, is different. Mm. And we work also on nature connectedness. Uh, how the needs to be in natural environment is good for well-being and and also for um, health. We work also on um, uh, quality of life, the concept of quality of life, and you can see that a, a lot of um, factor explain a good quality of life, but environmental quality. It's uh, and health are and housing conditions are a, a good uh, ex, um, explain good urban context also. So we we can't explain all the quality of life, but uh, um, maybe with environmental quality, health, personal security, we can uh, um, we have answer to to contribute uh, to a better quality of life. So, so this is uh, my f- uh, farm work, and uh, I have no uh, farm. I have a, uh, um, 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 how to say. I I think that's um, um, my my opinion uh, with my, uh, farm, with my experience of psychologists is to say that we we can we have four experiences in time of uh, COVID nineteen. Coronavirus is a four uh, square of space. I think we have a house experiences 
with um, uh, neighborhood experiences, cities, country experiences, and world experiences. And these uh, four squares are very different, and um, um, we, we need to have um, uh, to have this um, this quail experiences for speaking, uh, and um, uh, well, yeah, and also uh, um, in in psychology we can say that we uh, we experience this change no longer in the pure, uh, purely intellectual or distance way, but in a concrete way. In this, uh, I think it's the new, the new experiences. It's we experience this um, this change in our body. It's not uh, we are in the change. Uh, it's not uh, it's not um, we are in the new in the new in the new change. And we 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 have these experiences uh, very uh, intensely. Mm. And also. Um, the questions, but I have no answer. Fine. It's difficult to to. It's difficult because uh, I think it's. Uh, uh, I, I show. Uh, always crisis is a good opportunity to change. We can't uh, say uh, the the solutions is uh, good, but how to how to change, and uh, how um, in which level in which school uh, school to to change. I think uh, we need to. Um, uh, I, all all my my answers are in the in in the the concept of environmental psychology. More nature, uh, uh, less stress, uh, more um, uh, feeling, uh, better feeling with the place. A more community, um, but um, how I don't know exactly. To yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. That was a very interesting thing, and uh, of course now we we realize that the field of environmental psychology is becoming so important, and it. It mm. relates with almost every discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that is right. You said crisis is a good opportunity to change. So here mm. is a big crisis and it is giving us signals, indications that please, yes. you yes. have to change. There has to mm. be, uh, everything is not so good. Everything is not yes. so right the way you have been living till now and interacting mm -hmm. with nature. Because we have seen that the uh, COVID casualties are maximum in the, uh, the bigger the city, the intenser is the COVID affection, uh, mm -hmm. afflictions. So uh, now I will pose the same question to Abhilash Ji. Abhilash can take with his vast experience with nature, with environment, with politicians, and he is a journalist. So uh, we know that journalism ha has a great power. So how does he envisage this question? So well, uh, thank you, Savita Ji, for inviting me to this uh, forum. And uh, I'm not an architect by profession, but uh, I do travel different landscapes and uh, this new normal um, am i am i am i audible yes yes very much okay so um, uh, having heard uh, barbara and having heard arunji i have a different um, point to make uh, during this new normal whatever we are calling the new normal it is actually a very very high World. And as Savita Ji has said before, for the first time, the world looks like flat in the sense that from Africa to India, New Zealand to Sri Lanka, everywhere mm -hmm. all, on all continents we are facing, whether it is a smaller degree or a higher degree of the impact of the 
um, pandemic and in india the situation whatever may be seen from paris or london or washington mm. or tokyo it is very very serious in the sense that you have got humongous population and most people are illiterate they are also not rule bound so therefore there are a lot of problems being faced by the administration and the politicians and the city in which i and savita live mm. we are witnessing large number of deaths because of covid so the new normal as far as environment is concerned in the first phase in 2020 we thought that the rivers are getting cleaned up the forests are getting restored naturally pollution levels in the cities are coming down because vehicles are not flying there is no construction activity taking place and um, uh, well all the wildlife or birds or fishes and uh, everything they 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 were free of the human intervention so that new normal for the wildlife for the trees for the nature for the biodiversity was very good but mm. now yes. there are the new normal is now throwing up large number of questions in the sense that because of the hospital activity because of the covid um, the enhanced um, the challenges large number of uh, new things are coming into the environment which are posing problem mainly the plastics because of the pp kits because of online shopping because of new gadget coming into play because of uh, higher dependence of uh, individuals on technology there are very many new products coming into use of the human kind and the disposal thereof is going to be a humongous problem for the society and the landscape that we are actually discussing because uh, large number of as you all we all know that the pp kit which is being worn by the doctors or the paramedical staff they are all being used for once or twice maybe and they are being thrown and there are heaps of and heaps of this pp kits and the uh, large number of plastic uh, products being thrown here and there in indian cities eventually they will go into rivers eventually they will go into oceans and they will create large number of problems in the days to come because i remember the unesco had uh, um, celebrated two years ago maybe three years ago i think 2017 or maybe 18 it was plastic free world but now that plastic is coming back in a big big way so this covid is one medical uh, uh, threat or medical challenge to the human kind but at the same time it is also affecting our natural landscapes because once this covid i am hoping i am keeping my fingers crossed that the covid will be over within a few months or so but what doesn't know because many new variants are coming and i would like to ask barbara also what is happening in france but uh, elsewhere in the world it is not uh, actually under control and now lancet the famous medical magazine has reportedly said that uh, the one of the variants or the of the covid mm. uh, virus is airborne and if it is mm. airborne then there are very very serious challenges before all of us we don't know whether we will be alive in the next few days or not so the new normal is uh, teaching us new things to live first thing is basically to look after the physical fitness of each individual at the same time looking after the nature also in the sense if tomorrow the nature because now the urban urban centers in the world are seeing that people who are living in crowded societies have to disperse themselves and go away into freer and uh, bigger areas to live in so that they are not in contact with uh, other people and uh, lessen the possibility of the spread of the pandemic but the fact remains that how people will be able to afford all people will be able to afford new housing mm-hmm. and larger spaces and uh, there are very many issues which are also coming with this new mm-hmm. normal so called new normal and uh, the human race is actually caught in a cliff in which uh, we are not aware what is going to happen tomorrow because there is all all kinds of planning is uh, failing because uh, the drug which we thought was curing uh, the uh, covid 19 
uh, in the last year is uh, not um, uh, any more effective medicine. There are newer and newer medicines and newer and newer injections and newer and newer um, uh, medical aids are coming in and trying to contain the disease. So here is uh, a fact that whether it is whether COVID emanated, emanated from China or from other place, one doesn't really know. But the fact remains that human race and medical science and uh, other issues about environment and landscapes are fighting with each other for the survival of human. That, but one thing has been taught to us that the population explosion across the world, whether it is in Brazil or whether it is in the United States or India or Japan, we need to control human population because unless the human footprint is reduced, there is no solution to challenges like COVID. So I would stop at that for the first question and then I will again have the free discussion and participate. Thank you, Savita ji. Thank you very much, Abhilashi. That was very nice. Like uh, you said, the landscapes of new normal are actually dealing with highly abnormal conditions. So that is, uh, and across the world, it is. It is not uh, uh, not limited to a certain area. It is same problem across the world. And now we are uh, posing many questions, environmental stress, and uh, and of course you have um, pointed out a major problem with COVID-19, that is the huge amount of plastic that is generated, the waste that is generated. So the UNESCO's mission on uh, plastic-free world is, is not, just not going to be there. So uh, with the new way of new lifestyles, the online shopping and isolation of the people, we are facing very abnormal conditions. And then he has also uh, uh, pointed out some major problems. We say people have to um, distance themselves, social distancing. So mm -hmm. how do people get the affordability for that? So um, he ended with the, the pointer that we need to control the human footprints because somehow somehow uh, the humans have been uh, just uh, overdoing everything. So this is um, the COVID has come as a pause. Like Professor Neil Kanchai in his talk said, uh, talked about the resonance, the resonating, what is resonating. So COVID-19 has brought many resonances which we need to um, need to address. Mrs. Butch had said that size is not the indicator of progress. We have big cities, metropolitans, and uh, we have uh, big malls. Everything big is not the indicator. Now we have to really think about what we actually need. Now I will pose, uh, if you want to have any discussion between the panelists or uh, with the people, because we want it to be an interactive session before I put the second question. So, Would you like to have some interaction? Anyone from the audience? Or we go to the first, second question and then we let have- us, Let us go to the second question and then open okay. the floor. Okay, so the second question is, like we say, any disease can be fought by our immune system. Like in, if we go to our traditions, they, they say your, your body should be strong because then it fights mm -hmm. with any disease. So any disease can be fought by our immune system. The COVID-19 has brought this back to the forefront. People were not very um, uh, attentive to their health, but COVID-19 has brought this back to the forefront that you need to be healthy. To, and it has brought to the forefront to build, strengthen our bodily immunity. What do you think, the experts with varied experience, with your experience, readings and observations, can the balance of the ecology of our ecosystems 
give us a very strong protective cover? Can it give a protective cover? Can we say instead of immediate mask heatika, like mask is the best vaccination, prevention is better than cure. Can we say ecological balance is the real vaccination? Because we have seen that COVID cases, COVID casualties are more in urban areas where the ecological system balance has gone haywire. So what do you think? Can we say like that? Is, is, there, is the ecological balance having any importance or role in the external immunity? So I pose this question to Barbara ladies first. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I think uh, there is a correlation between uh, system immunity and uh, environmental uh, environmental stressor. Uh, a lot of studies show uh, that um, people who living in city and uh, especially uh, poor people uh, um, have. Um, uh, a lot of um, uh, environmental stress because they don't live in the good uh, part uh, of the city. They live uh, near a um, uh, highway. They live uh, with um, industrial um, uh, industrial uh, site. And also in uh, slums. Also, also in slums. Yes, uh, in slums. Uh, in India, uh, yeah. as far as India yeah, is concerned. In India. Yeah, but uh, also in France, we have um, a, a new slump now with um, uh, people who come from Romania and they live uh, near the highway. Uh, it's slum, it's little uh, uh, for maybe uh, 20 people, 20 person. But um, and um, also uh, uh, they have uh, also inequality with um, uh, research with the work and so they have environmental stress and also social stress. And mm -hmm. uh, um, for the, uh, in, in the beginning of the pandemic in France, the, uh, um, the mortality of these people was very high. Uh, uh, in France, we have uh, uh, all the people who die with uh, uh, um, virus, but also these people, because they have um, this type of stress, but also more uh, diabetes and more um, uh, uh, heart. Um, I, I don't know the, the name in, in uh, is hypertension when the heart uh, is very uh, hypertension in France, but. Uh, it's like the lungs, the, the lungs are affected. The lungs are affected. The breathing, breathing yes, problem, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. because they 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 inhale the vehicular emissions into their uh, yes. breathing. Uh, this is because they they are living next to the highway. Perhaps. Yes, that but is what also, you want to say? yes, no, no, no. It's uh, it's diabetes Be because this these people are also. Um, they are not health, uh, they are not a good health because mm -hmm. they don't eat well. Mm -hmm. They okay. eat uh, uh, a lot of uh, sugar, a lot of um, um, meat, but mm -hmm. uh, and the the food it's not uh, with good quality. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a global uh, global explanations, but uh, it's uh, it's true. P people die. Um, more Early. than other people, yes. Okay. And for, for us, it's the first time that French people have the the are in in in, in face this type of uh, uh, situation. result situations. We can't say no. We don't know poor people, uh, environmental stress. No. Now it's true. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. <laughs> well said, well said. Very good, Barbara, yes. Uh, so uh, her statement, her experience has 
has uh, established that those who are uh, were facing a lot of environmental stress the mortality rate was higher in those areas so environmental stress coming from staying near the highway bad quality of food bad eating habits all that resulted in higher mortality so here the key word is environmental mm -hmm. stress and mm -hmm. so we can relate environmental stress with mortality yes so i would pose the same question now to uh, arunji arunji you are from the industry and engineer in the corporate sector so you you can give uh, show a different light on it altogether <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Savita ji. You know, uh, uh, in the corporate world, we look at scenario grazing, uh, gazing into the future. Uh, one thing is very clear: nobody, nobody in this world can predict what's going to happen thirty years from now. And uh, certainly, oh, the sir, even even the next year, we are not aware of you know, what is that going to happen. <laughs> You know, I, I I kind of recall my own example when I did engineering. Uh, I used a slide rule for complex engineering calculations. Today, right. students don't even know what a slide rule is. You know. Yes. <laughs> or when I did management, there was no such concept as digital marketing. You know, it was not taught to me. And certainly, uh, uh, all the, the the retail banking and ATMs and things like that. Some of my colleagues have started that, but these are things not taught. You have to somehow uh, Learn it. anticipate these changes, or uh, and this is where your uh, skills come in. And uh, this is the Spikbuke experience that I can now talk about. That really, if you can concentrate on what you are doing, this is what uh, we in Spikbuke try and. Uh, in, in uh, take across to the youth, you know, it's uh, 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 they will be then be able to cope with the, uh, the future. Now, this is where you talk of the yoga. You now, as you inhale and exhale, you concentrate on your breath. As you mm -hmm. sing Nad Yoga, you concentrate on the note as you sing. Mm -hmm. As you dance, it's the posture. Now, all this concentration, if you can take to your studies and whatever work you do, you know, you, you end up being more productive. And then, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's also known that uh, many eminent people were incidentally musicians. I mean, take President mm -hmm. Abdul Kalam, he was a missile scientist, but he played the veena. Mm -hmm. And there are many examples. Albert Einstein uh, played the violin. You know, he discovered gravity waves a hundred years ago. So they were able to work in the abstract domain and this is what helped. You have uh, Manjul Bharga, who is a professor of mathematics uh, and a winner of the Fields Medal, which is something on par with the Nobel Prize for mathematics. He believes classical music in the school curriculum, we, the country would produce not just better artists, but better scientists, judges, innovators. Mm -hmm in general better human beings and he himself plays the tabla so there is this uh, relationship and our concern uh, also is that like heritage even our like the natural forest etc should not be allowed to die even our heritage should not be allowed to die and there's a lot uh, uh, our heritage teaches you to respect our environment uh, for the long-term sustainability. You know, you, if you know a classical dancer going to perform, how they worship the ground on which they're going to perform before they start their performance. I mean, it's so inherent in us that uh, uh, you like to uh, respect the environment. Now we're talking of trash, etc. Et you know, we have our conventions, which is a, a busy day when we ask the students to get up at seven, 4 o'clock or 3.30 in the morning and start doing yoga from 4 to 7. And then uh, uh, after the yoga is finished, 
we have a, a, a thing called shramdan where we say, look, you people must clean the environment, mm. try and instill this practice in you as young students yeah. that you must clean the place. After all, we have our conventions and uh, institutes that are making their campuses available to us. So we must give back to them in a better condition than what we receive. So uh, uh, this this is kind of a practice we try and give in our youth. Similarly, if you look at our heritage, it is really a minimalistic heritage. You know, when you do yoga, all you need is a sheet which you spread on the ground and you can do your yoga. You don't need elaborate gymnastic equipment uh, to stay healthy. Uh, so this simplicity, if we can bring into our lifestyle and move away from the greed yes. that is causing so much problem. Which I is what Gandhiji had said, perhaps. Yes, hmm? yes. so uh, uh, we instigate, okay, try, and, try and bring it about, lead simple lives. In fact, uh, when it comes to these conventions, again, we serve holistic food. And it's surprising how simple food can give you so much energy. I told you how it is such a packed routine. They get up at 3.30 in the morning. They have these uh, yoga. Then they have intensive workshops from 9 to 12, lunch, afternoon programs. Then they have their early dinner at 5 o'clock and evening concerts. So it's, a, it's till 10 o'clock at night. And yet with this holistic food, the students are able to take it. It's, you know, it's if you overeat, you tend to become lazy. But uh, whatever you eat is holistic, it is digested and it converts into energy. Uh, you are able to uh, uh, to take it all. So hopefully uh, with these values, if you can instill in the youth, uh, it should help revive our, uh, our landscapes. As I said, greed is a big problem for the landscape. We human beings have uh, overexploited uh, again from due to greed. So, if we can be leading simplistic lives, the kind we try to do in the in the Spikmaki organization, I think there's a good future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arunji. Yes, you have rightly said that we have to relook at the way we are going ahead with a lot of greed. We want more and more, more land, more of everything. We want to uh, cut across forests. We want to uh, make bridges across rivers. And um, like we want everything for ourselves. We are not thinking of the other species. So the key word that you said, I would say, is minimalism. We can do with very little. And another key word is the values, if we respect, we have our value system in place, we can certainly revive our landscapes, as you said, the, the classical music and the traditional arts, they give due respect to the lands and the landscapes. The classical dancer will always uh, bow to the land first and then start the, uh, the performance. So, Abhilashi, I would uh, like you to address this question, very tricky question, with your expertise of journalism and vast experience in travel and environment. Yes, uh, Samita ji, as you rightly said, I wear a number of hats, so I, I have this uh, multidisciplinary approach uh, as far as my analysis of journalism is concerned. Mm -hmm. The fact remains that uh, mm, that this new COVID and uh, if we go back like uh, Mr. Arunji has said that, um, mm, am I audible? Yes, he is very... That Arunji had said that uh, they, they asked the students uh, during their conventions to clean up the premises or the campus. But, you know, that is what the world is discussing for the last 25 years or more, that are we, the new generation, is responsible enough to think of the next generation and what kind of world we are going to hand over to the next generation of ours. So, naturally, there is a comparison that uh, our forefathers, our fathers, our mothers, the way they lead their life, they led their life, and the way 
they handed us the world or the planet how what have we done to that planet in the last couple of years was it because of industrialization was it because of human greed was it because of uh, uh, because the god gave a better brain to human beings because it when we do the workshops and uh, organize conferences in wildlife most of the speakers and knowledgeable people in the field or wildlife biologists and others they come up with one theorem or one theory that uh, as you have also very lightly touched upon this thing savita ji that the human race or the human being is the most greedy of the most i mean the greediest of the species and because they have got brains because they have got um, technology to their hand i don't think a tiger um, which was living in ranthambore or kana or some other tiger reserve for 50 years ago has come up with some new technology or or a snake or a butterfly or a birds but human beings are evolving newer and newer technology to control the entire world and we saw what happened in the suez canal last month that a ship got stuck there and uh, everything was you know stopped uh, near that uh, suez canal so the point is that uh, the growing population growing technology is actually helping the human being or it is going to be counter productive so my my point of view is that that if we are not taking the cue from arun ji stock that we should really try and i i i i would request barbara not to take it otherwise but uh, india about 50 years or 100 years ago was not like that we learned the consumerism from the west mainly from america or because we were ruled by the british so we were brought up in that uh, atmosphere where we wanted more and more you know, technological advancement we wanted now india is competing with us or maybe with uh, you know, korean uh, countries or maybe japan maybe china in technology in armaments in everything and we are losing our natural heritage which is uh, in, in if i say the mountains in the i mean small hills and hillocks nearby cities are being removed the rivers are being polluted the forests are being cut because of the because of the new mantra of so called growth we are entering the areas where the human beings were not expected to enter and the uh, and the animals and their kingdom should have ruled but now we are saying that because the and this has all resulted in the climate change and climate change is happening and this covid has actually taught us everything which we were actually knowing but we are not practicing so i think that our greed is resulting into all this thing and somebody up there is teaching us a lesson that if you don't behave you will have to uh, be now you know punished the way we are being punished uh, these days the number of my friends are in hospital number of my friends have died number of my friends are in lots of problems across the country so fact remains that we the human race is so so helpless today and yet if we are not able to learn i don't think the future will be any secure for anybody who manages to survive this uh, onslaught of uh, the pandemic and i think that uh, the entire thinking of humans in the world also also in india because we are already 140 crore or and growing and nobody is thinking uh, that um, and because of this um, huge population competition is uh, uh, rising and because of competition people are resorting to all kinds of unethical practices the black marketing of injections the black marketing of beds everything is happening in india that you may be barbara listening or maybe reading in indian or global newspapers the fact remains that the response to covid in other countries smaller maybe it is switzerland maybe it is germany maybe it is italy maybe it is france maybe it is whatever mm-hmm. but in india the scenario is very different and yet the government which is the federal government or the state governments are unable to know how to respond to the emerging new normals and therefore every responsible citizen is required to play his or her role so that we are able to collectively combat the emerging situations 
of which we actually do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. So mm -hmm. something of the uncertainty that is also trying to um, take over the human race, which it has already taken place because now they are saying this is the second wave or maybe third wave and what is going to happen in the couple of weeks uh, here onwards. So the point is, what uh, we are all discussing is about the new normals in the landscape that we are um, living. We must try to um, help each other. We must try to um, uh, try to less burden the nature because we are extracting water. We are extracting because every food item comes from the nature and we are cutting the forest. So what is going to happen to the food security in the coming decades? So. India is anyway facing huge, huge problem of drinking water because the natural resources and natural wetlands and rivers are under huge pressure. So all these things are directly or indirectly are related to environment and ecology. And therefore, um, I think this uh, worst chapter in human history so far should be able to make each individual wiser than he was yesterday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Abhilashi. Yes, with your vast experience across the globe, you have really pinpointed the, the, the grim situation that we are facing. And you have rightly said that we have to, if we fail to learn from these conditions, then we have a, we do not have a very good future. <coughs> He, of course, has a multidisciplinary approach in answering this question. And he has said that with, with the, with the, uh, the pride of technology, because with technology, the man thought he can conquer everything. He can even conquer nature, which he has tried to, like he has referred to the disappearing hills, which people are um, digging down for uh, various resources. <coughs> Forests are being cut. So he said that we have to put a break on our greed, our unending greed, and to less burden the nature. As he said, it's the worst chapter in human history, and therefore we have to attend to it in, in a very conscious manner, and we have to learn from the situations we are facing now. And collectively, it has to come through collectively. And of course, our discussions today are um, also heading towards that, the collective thinking by experts, by general uh, people, uh, thinking about how we should uh, behave in future. Thank you very much. Now I open the session to the audience. We would like the audience to interact with our three experts. Anyone? I'm sure. Yes, Pankaj, you want to ask? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, yeah. uh, uh, after listening to all the speakers, um, what I feel is like uh, there is one thing I have realized is the education system. Although it is now improving all over the world, but it still it needs to be even make more robust. I'll give you one simple example. Uh, we, we were looking for a house move in Doha last week and we were looking for some compound areas where, you know, there are villas and individual, like it's not an apartment. So we went into one of the villa. There was a nice big tree at the backside and uh, it's like a people tree. Uh -huh. and looks, looks like 15, 20 year old. And the guy, the security guard said, like, I can speak to the leasing team. Like, if you don't want this tree, it can be cut. Oh, and, oh. Uh, <laughs> and me and my wife, we both looked at each other and we gave around five minute lecture to that guy that, that please don't cut it. 
uh, <laughs> even if we don't take this villa even somebody else take it don't cut this tree because it takes mm-hmm. 20 years to grow this tree and you know it's it's such a shame like i mean uh, we are into that mentality so this is like um, and i'm sure that security guard must be you know at least educated till grade 4 or grade 5 if not up to the complete schooling so i think this this basic uh, approach towards trees yes. and all and last in the last session uh, nirmala ma'am said like we are into a different kind of a mindset we are into like you know planting trees and taking nice pictures with all the celebrities and whatever mm-hmm. but at the same time we are not thinking like a tree which has grown 20 for last 20 year we are not stopping the you know uh, you know somebody is cutting it so no, we are not stopping them but at the same time we are into growing the new plant which will take another 20 year to grow so this is what i wanted to add yes very good the experts would like to answer i think arun ji is feeling all excited to answer this question no, it's true i mean uh, uh, people don't appreciate why why must you uh, it's a, it's a, it's a heritage as i said the yeah. tree the 20 year old tree is a heritage true and we must preserve our heritage period <laughs> I think there's yeah. no question on that. There's no debate on that. It has to be done. True. Yeah. Ah, uh, ma'am, Perhaps. Savita, ma'am. Yes. Yes, Sachin. Sachin Paliwal. Yeah, Sachin. Very good. Ah, uh, Sachin is uh, a ma'am, practicing. Ma'am, I'd like to take. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, ma'am. Ah, uh, uh, I'd like to take uh, Pankaj uh, Pankaj's point of view uh, slightly further. Uh, what's happening uh, is that we are following certain kind of uh, education practices which does not promote ethics uh, in any uh, form of uh, its uh, meaning uh, neither in practice uh, nor in terms of ethics towards uh, our uh, ancestors towards our nature and the ethics of sharing things and we are yes. already i mean it's a very unfortunate uh, part of indian education that we are not uh, I, i don't know whether what's happening right now yes, but uh, yeah. it's not actually i am in the middle of a, a meeting kind of thing uh, uh, it's not actually uh, teaching the children to share uh, the resources to share and respect uh, nature and all uh, like uh, what pankaj had uh, pointed out uh, saving just one tree is one part of that uh, whole setting uh, when mm-hmm. we are talking of the new landscape uh, we would like to uh, we would like people to actually respect all the things that are there in the nature itself uh, i mean we uh, we had a small uh, presentations at some time uh, where uh, there was um, a study was done on the uh, the aspects of uh, puja that we do all around us mm-hmm. and this uh, prashad that is being uh, given to us uh, around the year if we look at it 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 is being given in such a way that it is uh, molding our health uh, we mm-hmm. have this uh, water tulsi water it's a very mm-hmm. important uh, herb and uh, you take it almost daily if you go to the mandir mm-hmm. then uh, throughout the year uh, at various points you find that uh, the prashad itself is a detox for you mm-hmm. so we were uh, talking of this particular aspect also where uh, a person uh, person's health important is uh, more important so there's some intrinsic things in our own culture which we have lost and we have uh, in fact not taught to the younger generation so uh, there's there's a lot of i mean it's not just the landscape aspect it's the whole ethics of uh, life that should be uh, should be taught thank you very good sachin yes at the education system any expert would like to address this issue upon our people that were trying to solve it would you like to say? yeah uh, i totally agree uh, ethic is um, is a keys is one of the keys because uh, um, uh, um, um, for example in france uh, we have a program of environmental education um, and we, we explain to we educate young uh, young generations to 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 promote 
uh, uh, respect of environment, but um, is, uh, for example, one hour in one week, but it's not uh, an ethic. Uh, for example, I, 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 uh, 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 a little example. In the school of my um, daughters, they, they have a program of uh, environmental education. But, and uh, after this, they go uh, to see volcans in France, but they don't use train, they use car. So uh, during two weeks, they speak about environment and pollution, etc. But they use uh, a bus and not the train for going to, to nature. So you understand? Yeah. Yes, uh, but I think the key, one of the keys is ethics. It's very, very important to to, and I think also that we we lost uh, ethics and philosophical uh, questions because we uh, with um, the greed of uh, pleasure, uh, we we want always a, 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 a little pleasure with the consumptions with the uh, videos um, game with um, uh, a lot of things will give us a little bit pleasure and in in the brain this little bit pleasure gives dopamine and yeah. we have always uh, we have um, um, addicts with uh, this uh, input of dopamine in the brain and uh, okay <laughs> but we, we need to we need to educate uh, young generations with this um, this B bs they like something but it's not good for for uh, for for brain it's just yes. a physiological uh, uh, input of, of dopamine like sugar, like uh, you, you understand, but ethics yes. is more um, uh, is is a is a pleasure, but more um, uh, you need more times. Uh, yes, like uh, so, you plant a, a tree, your pleasure is uh, ten years after. It's not immediate, yes. and yes. I, I think we need to to. Um, to take this uh, this idea of ethics and long time. Yes. Mm. yes. If I may add, you know, ethics is is different to legal. Something could be legal, legally right, but ethically wrong. You know. Yeah. I mean, mm. for instance, yes, yes, sure. We we had the situation in the Kumbh Mela or the elections in Bengal. You may have exempted uh not wearing masks there to make it legal but it was not ethical you know when you have such a pandemic uh, yes. and the risk involved there's no question of allowing uh, uh such gatherings uh, you know this is a subtle thing uh, okay you may have made it legal i mean uh, i may be delving a little into politics in this but <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, even the elected government in in Delhi, for instance, is now there's a lieutenant governor who's the boss. You know that sort of thing. Legally, yeah. the parliament has made it, but you know, is it ethical? You know, uh -huh. in all our thoughts, we need to really think of uh, what we do. Yeah. We should be doing ethically. You know, you may be legally right, but uh, is it is it done? Sort of thing. And we need yeah. to think that way in all yes. that we do. There's no questions. Yeah. Thank you. Very correct. Abhilashi, would you like to add something to this? The, the last comment, but then I had to leave then. So okay. I would like to say that, yes, education, mm, uh, ethical values, moral values, legal, mm, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the, the laws of the land, the environmental concerns, everything is a complex um, if we, if we look at them collectively, it is a very complex uh, scenario. But fact remains that uh, there was a mention of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, but uh, even his party, because uh, Arunji has spoken about politics, so I am, since I am a political journalist and I cover politics a lot, I write a lot of politics, so I would, I had, oh, 
I know right. this thing about uh, saying that even the leading party of the country, that is Congress party, did not uh, live up to the expectation of his founder, that is Gandhi ji. And secondly, today when we are talking our education system in India, what we see is that not one single university is ranked among the top 100 universities of the world. And we have got a new education policy. We have got schools on the other hand, that is the fulcrum is like that, that the education ministry, which has been recently renamed as the education ministry in Delhi, uh, what they are trying to do, I don't know, but the fact remains that uh, the countries as huge as India, there are so many languages and so many issues concerning education. We have not been able to create a society which is responsible towards the country. There was a mention of heritage. So we see all, I go to number of uh, built heritage points or maybe whether it is Kajura or whether it is Bimbetka, whether it is the Hampi or whatever. And we see that people are trying to deface the monuments. So what kind of uh, education we have imparted to them or for that matter, people are out to uh, damage the uh, public property. So these kind of things are cannot be stopped by law alone because they are ingrained into the individuals. And therefore, like this young man has said that in Doha, he said that don't cut the tree, but I am I am surprised that in a country where there are not many trees, the the person can think of cutting a tree. In mm. India, there is a there is a law, and the tree authority in every municipal corporation uh, has to take a permission from the municipal corporation. Mm. So there are so many issues, but basic thing is that if we are able to restrict and monitor our own behavior and our own family's contribution to the uh, to the society i think things can start improving but only yesterday i read it in newspapers that the mm, huge black marketing of the new mm, injection which has come into market for containing the serious patients of covid now what kind of ethic and what kind of morality we are talking because people are just not mm, uh, i mean there is a medical fraternity there are others who are involved in this so, and when we see the court, how the judgments are being given, so it is very <coughs> complex and uh, I must say very, uh, I mean, a situation of despair, but I don't want to go into that. Restricting myself to the new normal, I would say that we should all try and see how best we can save ourselves and the human society from the onslaught of uh, the virus. And because newer and newer forms are coming into play and therefore we should be very careful and uh, i must thank isola for organizing this wonderful panel discussion and uh, thank you very much i can go thank on and on but i would like to <laughs> there are time restrictions so yes. thank you very much Sabita ji. thank you very much Abhiraji, for giving us time your inputs were also valuable any more okay, questions? Thank you. Bye. Are you are leaving? Yeah, if, if you okay, permit me then. to do so. Aj, okay. Thank you very much. We will see thank if you. there are any more questions, and then we will end the session. Thank you. All the best to Arunji and Barbara and uh, Savita. Thank, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. And there, and does anyone uh, want to ask any questions? Ma'am, Rahul Makija, how are you? Yes, good, good. Nice to see you, Rahul. How are you? Good, good Koram. I want to add all the things which Sachin and everybody has added. Yeah. I think we should take land as heritage. I think nobody uh -huh. is taking land as an heritage. Very and good. We are talking about building and systems of building and educating the same. Mm -hmm. We should always talk about systems of non-building mm -hmm. and laws of non-building mm -hmm. if we start formatting laws of unbuilt environment then things would improvise environment mm -hmm. will improvise mm -hmm. i think that we ignore the mm -hmm. the laws the systems of unbuildable things unbuilding nature mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is your part of landscaping and everything yeah. <laughs> to, to to always systems of uh, government and law says 30% MOS, uh, sorry, FAR, 30% ground coverage. Mm -hmm. So there should be an incentive towards 
what is 70% left out yeah and how it is left out if those systems are yes. formed into the action plan of the build of the building then these non buildable spaces have more meaning and more life into it <laughs> so this is just a suggestion yeah excellent rahul very good very thought provoking yes we always our focus is towards the buildings and the interiors and the, the leftover space is just actually leftover no not much it uh, arun ji or babra would you like to answer this question this statement Um, Babar, go ahead. Babar, go ahead. Ah. Babar? No, 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 no. Uh, I, I don't understand well the questions. Actually, he is saying that our focus is always towards the building and we are not giving any importance to the land that is left out uh, on the sides of the building, yes. which is actually a, a bylaw that you have to leave this much open space. So he is mm -hmm. saying, how do you deal with those spaces? Are you with the, that should with be the focus? The, my, with the my, open space in in the work. My point is more educating about those spaces. Yeah. My point is systems formation for those laws which yes. are unbuilding spaces. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I, so, I, I, you would know the laws better, but isn't that what landscaping is all about? The the unbuilt space. Yes. Ah, yes, but, yes. But that is not in system and form and formation of laws. That's the point. I yeah. See. Yes. Uh, it yes. depends on the uh, on the push and the pull and the power of the landscape architect. If he can do mm. something against many odds, he can yes. do it. Otherwise, there are no takers for that. that yes. That, because that, there that, is no. We system. have. Um, I understand. I understand. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, in environmental psychology, I, I mm. don't uh, present this concept. We mm. have the, um, the idea of uh, restorative environment. Mm. That means that uh, we use a uh, landscape for um, restorate our attention uh, system. Mm. Uh, when we are uh, focused on, um, for example, now we are on computer mm. and um, uh, we, we, we see only uh, uh, our, um, um, our place, mm. but uh, if we stay a lot of time uh, on a computer, our, our attention system um, mm. uh, decline. Yeah. And we are tired and uh, we are busy in mind. Yeah. When we go outside and we see landscape, beautiful landscape, for example, our mind, uh, our system, uh, our attentional system uh, are very good. Relaxes. So, yes, we, it's relaxed, but also we, we have more, um, more energy and more, uh, and we can um, um, uh, have reflections on uh, what we want in life, what is a place in life. You understand? Uh, we, we, when we are always on, it's an example, on computer, or uh, um, we can't uh, have uh, good reflections, ethic reflections, for example. But yeah. outside, yeah. So uh, landscape, for example, in psychology, we have... Um, uh, we 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 use this uh, this landscape for understand how um, the the psychology need to be in contact with uh, landscape for good uh, health. You understand? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And for ex and an, another example in in France, we have eolien. I don't know if you understand. Is um, uh, energy with the wind. Yes, yes. Yes. Wind and energy. We have, yes, wind. And we have a, a park, a lot of, a big park with a lot of uh, eolien. Okay. But people don't like this. They, mm -hmm. they refuse to have this in, in the landscape 
because they say that it's uh, they they don't um, they can't benefit to a beautiful landscape for uh, for restore yes. uh, them. Yeah. They don't like so you understand. Mm. Uh, uh, yes. We, we we need to have a, a landscape for a good health also, yeah. mental health. Yes. Very I don't good. know if uh, you understand what I say, <laughs> because I'm yes. so sorry for my English. No, no, you were, uh, we could understand it perfectly. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So landscapes for good health, that is what... He meant that there should be some system in place for these unbuildable spaces, unbuilt yes. spaces, so that uh, due attention is given to them, so that it it actually acts as a restorative um, landscape. Yes. So these, uh, if I may just ask, these wind farms normally they could be a, a wind farm in, far away from. Uh, uh, they obviously have to be located at places where there is wind all the time to mm -hmm. be able to generate the energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. They may not be in uh, domestic places. No. Uh, you know, because I have seen uh, you go to Jaisalmer, there are wind farms. You know, with all the uh, the terrain there, mm -hmm. wind there, and there are several windmills which are installed to generate electricity. And that people are looking at uh, alternative sources of energy, mm -hmm. not just solar, but also wind. Mm -hmm. So there is these wind farms that are coming up and far away from, uh, because then you can always transmit the electricity to where it is needed. Uh, it doesn't have to be in your uh, uh, your landscape areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. Um, um, uh, I want to know if in India people use char charbon. Charbon. What is that? Car charbon. Charbon is uh, carbon. Carbon. What is that? Carbon. Carbon. The name is uh, carbon. No. Is the uh, energy? When you is a, a black energy for for char carbon, 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 uh, carbon, coal. carbon yes. <laughs> you, you are yes. dependent to carbon. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. There is still yeah. a lot of carbon that is burnt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's quite an issue actually because uh, historically we consume very little compared to our population, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we need to generate an electricity for our growth and development and progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, historically, the Western world has already done it. When our mm -hmm. turn comes to do it, uh, and we need to do it because there is uh, we need energy. But fortunately for us, we are also looking at alternatives. Like I talked of the wind farms, mm -hmm. solar is certainly developing very rapidly. India is taking a lead role in the world in solar energy. Mm. In fact, the International Alliance for Solar Alliance is based in Delhi, a part of the UN organization. Mm. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, India is in the tropics and therefore there's far more sunshine and uh, solar technology. So, so therefore, we may not have burned as much carbon. Uh, sometimes there's an advantage in developing late. Mm -hmm. We jump onto newer technologies and we don't have to uh, burn carbon, yeah. coal and such things. But uh, it's, it's a tricky issue because we need to develop and we need to generate electricity so that poverty can be addressed. Yeah. You know, it's important. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe we are lucky that we can get onto solar and wind and other forms yeah. and don't yeah. have to burn as much carbon like the rest of the world has already done. Yeah, fact, mm -hmm. damage is due to that. Mm -hmm. We've not we've not done very much. Yeah, we've not done it at all. You know that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone else with something to add? So should we? Uh, I think. 
this was a wonderful session. Should I do a little summary or uh, I will do a little summary of whatever we have discussed. So we had a very, very nice and uh, um, informative session and all the three experts have given their uh, inputs in, um, in their visualization of landscapes of the new normal. And like Arunji with his experience of the corporate sector and of the industries, he has said that people are realizing like the corporate sector are realizing that they're of the alternate way of working of the various options, like everyone need not rush to the uh, office every morning like that. But then it is having many other issues of isolation, the team spirit and, and the diversity and uh, overworking. So, uh, uh, so he say, says that some hybrid landscapes are emerging with this new normal and uh, Barbara added the environmental psychological aspects to it and she talked of places and the attachment, the sense of place and the staging of the space and a very important aspect of quality of life which was also highlighted by one of our talk sessions, Mrs. Nirmala Bush. She said that size is not so important. The quality of life is more important. And I think more or less all the three experts have, uh, have agreed to it. Um, uh, Barbara also uh, highlighted that the more casualties due to COVID-19 are happening because happening to the people who are facing a lot of environmental stress. So that is an important learning from this session that if we have more environmental people with more environmental stress, that means more uh, 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 susceptibility to this virus. Then uh, she said that crisis is a good opportunity for change, but how then all the experts added onto it. Abhilashi said that uh, we are looking at the landscapes of new normal with highly abnormal conditions facing the world, across the world. So uh, the new normal in the first phase was very romantic, like you had wildlife coming, birds coming, but the second phase is giving us a lot of the plastic garbage and a lot of uh, dependence on uh, the technology people sitting in the room all day with online work. So it is posing a different type of problems. Then he also talked of affordability for when you are talking of social uh, distancing, then is it affordable to many people? And he said that we need to control the human footprints. And uh, for the second question, whether environmental uh, ecological balance can give us environmental, uh, can add to our immunity. So uh, Arunji very rightly said that we have to go back and look at uh, our traditions. Like he said about yoga, now we are hunting for oxygen. The simple exercise of pranayam in yoga is ox oxygenating the, uh, the lungs, actually. So if you if you practice the the you know, the ancient time tested systems, it will going it is going to benefit you. And he also talked of uh, importance of values and to uh, for revival of our landscapes. He talked of minimalism and uh, and how much you need and uh, to Abhilashi with his multidisciplinary approach. He said that we because of our cutthroat competitions and greed, we have we have yeah. to uh, learn through what it has brought us to. And um, he also talked about the political will. Arunji said about this. Uh, why people uh, are gathering at the Kumbh. And one of the audience, I think Sachin talked of a very important aspect of ethics. So he talked of the legal and the difference between ethics, legal and ethics. 
and uh, I would like to add to it like um, instead of just following a ritual, one could have promoted the the philosophy. One of the findings of this session is also lack of philosophy in our daily lives. We could have highlighted the philosophy which says that man changa to kati me ganga. You don't have to rush to the ganga. If you are well, you are uh, in and out, then ganga is just next to you. You don't have to uh, cause a lot of uh, stress by um, crowding in this COVID times. So uh, the key word is restriction uh, and monitoring our own behavior. And um, one of the audience, Rahul Makhija, he's a practicing architect. He talked of the non-buildable areas. Pankaj talked of education, like Pankaj is also an architect. Uh, the need for environmental ethics brought into the education. And uh, education is uh, lacking in that. Barbara gave an example of um, the uh, environmental education in France, which was good, but then the the the, the it was not total. Like they would be mm -hmm. using uh, pollution, making um, uh, individual vehicle rather than a public transport. So um, it uh, the talk also panel also went through the various um, uh, modes of energy, polluting ener energy and. Uh, well, Arunji talked of India leading in solar energy now. So thank you very much, all the experts. It was a wonderful session. I would request Sonal, she is secretary of Indian Society of Landscape Architects, to give a vote of thanks. Very good. Thank you all. And uh, very uh, it gives me immense pleasure to thank our eminent speakers of the day. Ms. Barbara, Mr. Narun Sahaiji, and Mr. Abhilash Khandekarji for sharing their uh, wonderful insights on the topic. And um, this, uh, at this time, we are celebrating the World Landscape Architecture Month. And this is something we need to find out. Uh, the current uh, depressive state of COVID, it is, this is, I think, uh, has been a wonderful session in identifying how different uh, so members of society can contribute in changing how we build or how we look into the environment. So thanks, um, Ms. Barbara, Mr. Arun Sahaiji, for, for sharing us uh, unique insights from your perspective, which will be taken up by architects, designer, landscape architects. So thank you once again. And I would also like to thank the uh, coordinator of the session, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Urbi Singh, and uh, chairperson of the uh, today's uh, talk, Ms. Savita Raji, for organizing such a wonderful session. Thank you again. And um, the members of ISOLA MP of committee, Mr. Sarangbide, Ms. Urvi Singh, uh, Shivani Palewal, Richa Raji, and Anupama Bharti. So uh, thank you to all the participants for making this event a success and looking forward, kindly visit our page so that we continue this debate and we continue this well valuable talk on interdisciplinary uh, a way we how we can possibilities to investigate the possibilities for the future thank you once again to all tomorrow we have a very nice lecture by dr atilio patriccioli he is a um, professor who has taught at massachusetts institute of technology and a aga khan award winner architect he is talking on Landscapes of New Normal with focus on history, structure, and landscapes. So he will be talking more, going more into theory. So if you have time, it is 2.30 p.m. Indian time. So that would be around 11 a.m. France and Italy. He is at Rome. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.